God doesn't call the equipped. God equips the called. Someone told me that about 12 years ago when I first started um, full-time ministry and I was feeling really insecure because I know who I am. I never really dreamt about being a pastor or a leader in a church in any way and really felt um, not qualified. And this pastor said to me, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. I want you to think about that today uh, as, as we go through this devotion. Um, I'm going to do a short devotion on Palm Sunday, which is today. Uh, this is also called the triumphal or triumphant entry into Jerusalem for Jesus. And I'm going to prove to you that God equips the called. He doesn't call the equipped. So as a start, I just want to point out that the disciples, Jesus's closest friends, and the ones that you all know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and so on, they were not equipped. They were not the scholars of the day. They were literally the rejects. They were literally the ones that no Pharisee wanted. Uh, some of the uh, disciples, I, I think of uh, the, Mark the tax collector, um, uh, sorry, Matthew the tax collector, um, didn't even really hold himself to high standards with his integrity. He was, he was shady. And uh, yet Jesus called him because he was equipping the called. He wasn't calling the equipped. So I'm going to read for you guys today uh, Luke chapter 19 and point out a couple of things that I'll be preaching on soon. And I uh, wanted to sort of draw that to your attention today. So here we go. The triumphal entry. Uh, chapter 19, Luke 19, verse 28. When he said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when it drew near to Bethpage and Bethany. He, those are two uh, country villages on his way to Jerusalem. So yeah, Bethpage and, and Bethany. Uh, at the mountain called Mount Olivet, that two of his disciples saying, Go into the village opposite you, whereas you will find a colt, which is a donkey, tied, uh, tied up on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it to me. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Then say to them, because the Lord has need of it. Now, I am not calling you donkeys, but I am saying that the Lord needed some transportation, and he was doing this to fulfill an Old Testament prof prophecy uh, that he would ride a uh, donkey uh, into town, which is a signal of peace. But when Jesus got on that donkey, number one, it was... Uh, undisciplined, untrained, wasn't broken in, had never given anybody a ride before. It wasn't ready for the job. But Jesus knew that he needed that donkey to fulfill Old Testament prophecy and to make his public declaration, I am the Messiah. But Jesus could have made that declaration a lot of different ways. He could have just stood up on a really high place and said, I'm the Messiah. He could have chosen a white stallion. I am the Messiah. <laughs> to me, that makes a lot more sense. That's why I would have done it. Um, but again and again, you see Jesus making the point, I'm all you need. All you need to do is be willing to be chosen and used by me. So we read on verse 32. So those who were sent, the disciples went on their way and found it just as he said to them, but as they were untying the colt, the owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. We're taking it. Now, I just want to pause for a second here. If you're the owner of that donkey, donkeys those days were beasts of burden. They were used to plow the fields. They were used to carry heavy, uh, heavy things from point A to point B. And here you have two strangers stealing your donkey. And what do they say? The Lord has need of it. Imagine yourself in your house today. You look out the window, your beast of burden that carries your heavy objects and gets you from point A to B, aka your car, uh, some stranger's getting into it. And you're like, hey, that's my car, buddy. And their response is, the Lord has need of it. Um, you know, doesn't fly. Uh, but the point here is the disciples, also not equipped until they were called, 
they did what Jesus said and they were used for great things in the name of Jesus. So they've got the donkey, they're giving it to Jesus. It says, um, verse 37, then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, aka who Jesus hated, uh, called to Jesus from the crowd saying, teacher, rebuke your disciples. The Pharisees are saying, because this is the first time that Jesus ever publicly accepted the title Messiah. And the Pharisees are like, hey, tell them to zip it because you're not God, are you? Because if you are, we'll have to kill you. And Jesus said to them, uh, I tell you that if these guys keep quiet, the stones will cry out and start praising me. So Jesus is saying here, guys, I need to let the people praise me because if I don't, it's going to create this weird thing in nature and you're going to see the rocks start to praise me. And guys, this is sort of where I want to leave it today. Jesus is saying, I'm calling a donkey not equipped, just called. I'll equip him along the way. I'm going to use these ill-equipped disciples. By the way, as you read on in the Bible, the disciples didn't know what was going on here. They didn't actually really get the full picture until Jesus rose from the dead, which was a whole week later. So the disciples were clueless. Donkey, obviously clueless. And Jesus makes this final point here. It says, if you tell the people to be quiet, the stones will cry out and worship me. The rocks will do it. So It's clearly not up to us to be ready to serve the Lord. The rocks weren't ready. The disciples weren't ready. The masses weren't ready. That darn donkey wasn't ready. But Jesus used them anyway. Why? Because they were willing. Because they're part of creation. Because Jesus has a plan for imperfect people and low capacity people and weird people and sinners like you and me. And he can do a lot through us. Our job? is to allow ourselves to be used and to not predict the future. To not say, oh, well, God, I'll I'll do this if you do that. So many times I hear people say, um, you know, God, if you help me get an A in this exam, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Or uh, God, if you help me to date this girl or boy, uh, I will be a good Christian the rest of my life. That's not how it works. God calls who he wills. And if God calls you, be willing. So that's my assignment for you today, guys, as we head into this Easter week where we're celebrating the coming of Jesus into Jerusalem to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy and ultimately be put on that cross and raised from the dead, is where is God calling you, number one? And number two, what's stopping you from being used by the Lord? That's a trick question. And number three, are you going to beat the rocks? Can you praise Jesus this week so God doesn't have to use the darn rocks? Can you do it? Can you tell your friends on social media something encouraging and uplifting about Easter, about Jesus, about your Savior? Don't be embarrassed and don't make Jesus turn to the rocks and say, rocks, uh, your turn. Couldn't get these people to praise me. Guys, have a great week. Get excited about Easter. I look forward to seeing you at our Easter service. I hope to see many of you at the Easter egg hunt. Uh, So anyway, have a great week. God loves you and I miss you. See ya.